right, so welcome back. Let's add some methods. Uh, we will talk about kind of how this works, but honestly, I think the best way to do it is to, to just start writing a couple methods, uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of make sense of it as we go. So we're going to write a deposit method. We're going to write a withdrawal method. We're also going to improve the two string methods. We're going to write three methods. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to write them on the object that's called the prototype, which I promised to talk more about eventually. So let's go in and, and right now this two string it prints out just object object which is not very exciting. Uh, let's go ahead and make a uh, override of the two string method. So the way that this works is you say you know rh uh, object basics dot bank account uh, and then you add the word prototype and then the name of the function we want to write which in this case is two string. Uh, so two string is a function uh, that receives no parameters. So you can see, by the way, the reason we've kind of been using this, uh, this style of like making it a variable and then saying equals function is kind of in preparation for the way objects work, where you really need the style uh, so that you can add the word prototype uh, into the thing that you're making. So what we want to do here is we want to return a better display than just object to object, right? So I guess what we should display is probably this dot name. Actually, let's go ahead and say what it is. So we'll just say uh, name colon space plus this dot name, uh, and then we'll say uh, balance uh, colon space uh, this dot balance. And so now we're just going to return that from two strings. So hopefully if we go refresh our page now, what I'm hoping to get this time is instead of object object, it actually says name Bob uh, balance 100. So you can see that we're calling uh, the two string on it. I guess it's right here. Um, and then the two string is returning this string, which we're then printing to the console. So that's our first uh, first function. Let's go write another function. So let's go ahead and make uh, deposit. So deposit is going to receive uh, one parameter called amount. Uh, and what deposit's going to do is it's pretty simple, right? It's going to take uh, this dot balance uh, and add the amount to it, right? Uh, there's a bunch of fancy ways to do it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say plus equals uh, just to save myself a couple characters. And so now I've got another function on the prototype called deposit. And then what I want to do is I want to try to call that. So I'm just going to say bob.deposit. Uh, so let's just say bob deposited 50 bucks. And then since I want to see the result, I'm just going to print the two string of the object again. And so what we should hopefully see here is Bob of 100 and then Bob of 150. So let's go see if that worked. So if I refresh it here, uh, what we've got is we've got Bob uh, 100 and then Bob 150, voila. All right, let's talk just a little bit more about this uh, prototype thing. So why, why am I typing this word prototype? So prototype is something that's built in. So all objects have a prototype on them. Uh, to kind of see more about it, let's get fancy. Let's go into our dev tools, uh, click on sources, um, and then let's go ahead and uh, click on uh, the main.js one. So I guess it's this guy here. And what I want to do is I, I just want to set a breakpoints, right? So it's kind of neat. You can actually set breakpoints uh, inside the Chrome dev tools. And so now I want to refresh the page, uh, and you can see that it, it hit my breakpoint. Uh, so it's paused right here. And what I want to do is I want to look at some of the variables. It's crazy you can do all this stuff with Chrome DevTools. Um, I want to look at some of the variables that are in this. So you can see that it's got some local variables. So it's got this, which is just the document in this case. And then it's also got Bob. Uh, you'll notice that it knows what type of object Bob is. He's a bank account. And if you expand Bob, uh, you can see that Bob has on him a balance. Uh, and then he's also got a name. Right now where I set my breakpoint, I haven't actually done this deposit yet. So he's currently at, at 100. Um, he's also got this proto. So proto is the prototype, and if you expand it down, you can see uh, that what it got is it got all the things from bank accounts. Um, so it's got deposit on here, so that's how he has access to deposit, uh, and it's also got a two string on here, and that's because um, every object has a prototype. Um, that prototype is an object, and it points to something else. Um, in this case, the prototype for Bob is the same as the prototype for the bank account because he was a new uh, version of that function. I'm not sure if that made sense, but I mean, you can see how it works, right? So essentially, whenever we're saying, hey, we call two string on you, uh, we'll say 
you know, does Bob have a two-string method? Well, he doesn't. Um, then we'll check his prototype. Does his prototype have a two-string method on it? It does, so it functions that way. And you can see with this prototype chain, you could also do inheritance with classes, and there's all kinds of cool things. Let's go write another class. Uh, so let's go ahead, or another method. Let's go ahead and finish up things with uh, withdraw. See if you can knock it out by yourself, right? It, it shouldn't be hard. All right, I'm going to do it as well. Uh, so I'm just going to start by copying deposit and just say withdraw. Uh, and instead of saying plus equals, I'm just going to say minus equals. Uh, and then to make sure that I can actually run it, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and withdraw like $10. Uh, and then I'm going to run that and make sure that it works just fine as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit uh, debugging. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and unset my breakpoint. And I just want to go back to the console log. Um, and I can see that, um, oops, looks like I added money to him. I meant to say withdrawal. All right, there, that should fix that up. Uh, so now when I when I run it again, it should say 100, uh, 150, and then down to 140. Another thing you should go ahead and do is uh, prove that these are actually like, you know, objects and they're independent just by making a second object, right? So let's say we make a second object called Dave. I give him a million dollars. Sounds great. Uh, and then really all I want to do is I just want to see that I can print Dave. Uh, I can deposit something on Dave. Um, I don't really feel like withdrawing from Dave, so I'm just going to deposit. Um, but I just wanted to show that these really are, you know, classes, or sorry, instance variables, uh, just like you've used in, in any other language. Technically, they're not classes, but they work the same way, right? They have instance variables, they can do things. It's just the details are a little different. Uh, so uh, hopefully that uh, makes some of those things clear. You can see in the notes I did a slightly better job with the two-string. I'll go ahead and fix that. Um, so in my two string in the notes, I actually said balance, and then I have a dollar sign here, um, and then I print out two decimal points. So I say two fixed uh, to two decimal points. And if you do that, it'll make your output a little prettier. So if I refresh it again, uh, it kind of looks like currency now. So if you want it to look like currency, you should make that change as well. All right, let's have you uh, do one kind of on your own. Uh, we'll, we'll cut this video off. We'll show you the solution next video. What I want you to do is I want you to um, make another instance variable called interest rate. Um, and so you're going to set interest rate at the time you construct it. So an interest rate of 5% would be like 0 0.05. So you'd say like Bob, uh, 100, uh, and 0 0.05. But instead of overriding Bob, make a new variable. I think I call it Matt here in a little bit. So new instance variable, that's one thing. Modify the constructor so it can receive it, that's another. Um, update the two string function so that you can actually see what the interest rate is uh, for this person. And then I want you to add a method called accumulate interest. I would also like to see if you can figure out how to make it to where if they don't pass in one, uh, you set it to zero by default. So see if you can kind of muster that. I'll show you some of the next slides for what you're going for. So uh, here, okay, I've actually got the test example uh, right here. So add another uh, variable I called in Matt account. Um, and give him an interest rate of 0 0.05. Uh, and then print him, accumulate interest, print him, accumulate interest, print him. So it should be 100 when you print him the first time, and then 105 the second time, uh, and then I forget what the math works out to be, 110.25 uh, for the third time you print him. So that's what you should try to do. Uh, see if you can finish that up on your own, and I'll see you next time.